In this video, we'll talk about the difference between atoms and ions. And when we're talking about the difference between atoms and ions, it's all about the electrons. Let's take a look at an example of this. So if we have an atom like chlorine on the periodic table, Cl, that's considered to be neutral. That's because the number of protons and the number of electrons in the atom, they're equal. So this is an atom, and because there's no plus or minus after it, it's considered to be neutral, and the number of protons will equal the number of electrons. But chlorine forms chemical bonds, and when it forms chemical bonds, ionic bonds, it tends to gain an electron. Electrons are negative, so then we have this negative sign here. So now we consider this to be an ion. And with an ion, it's charged. It's not a neutral particle. It has a charge. It has a negative charge here because it has an extra electron. And in this case, we say that the protons, they don't equal the number of electrons. We have one more electron than we have protons. So this charge, the difference in electrons, that makes this an ion. So let's see what that really looks like. So let's build an atom and an ion. So let's work with nitrogen. Nitrogen on the periodic table, that has an atomic number of seven. So it has seven protons. Let's add seven protons. Protons, they're found in the nucleus here. They are positive. So we have seven protons, seven positive charges. So this is an ion because it has a positive charge. In fact, it has a seven plus charge because we have seven protons and they are positive. We said that a neutral atom, like those found on the periodic table, doesn't have a plus or minus after it. The electrons will equal the protons. So the electrons, which are negative, we have seven of those. That would cancel out the positive. That would give us a net charge of zero. It would be neutral. We put two in the first energy level and then five more in the second energy level. So we have seven electrons and seven protons. The net charge is zero. This is a neutral atom. But you'll notice something interesting. There's space for more electrons here in this outer shell. So we could add three more here to fill this shell. So now we have a full outer shell, which is really stable. And our nitrogen ion would have a charge of three minus. And that's the charge we get when nitrogen forms ionic bonds. We should probably put some neutrons in here too. These protons are positive. They're going to push away from each other. So let's put seven neutrons in. And you'll notice nothing happens when we put neutrons in to the charge. The only thing that's changing here is the atomic mass. So this would be the most common isotope of nitrogen here. It'd have a mass number of 14 because we have seven neutrons and protons. But when we talk about atoms and ions, we have three extra electrons. We have a three minus charge. This is an ion. But if the number of electrons and protons are equal, we call it a neutral atom. So pause and determine which of the following are ions and which are neutral atoms. So if you have a plus or minus after them, they're going to be ions. If there's nothing written, that's a neutral atom, and the number of protons will equal the number of electrons. And if you have just a minus, that means it's one minus. There's a general trend on the periodic table we can follow to tell what the charge will be on atoms when they become ions. So nitrogen, that's right here on the periodic table. So nitrogen will have a three minus. In fact, the elements here in general will form ions that are three minus. And note we write the plus or the minus after the number when we're dealing with ions, just the way we do it. If we have something here like oxygen or sulfur, form two minus ions. Things like fluorine, chlorine, those will form one minus ions. If you came over here and you looked at lithium or sodium, they would tend to lose an electron to form ions. Elements in group two, they lose two electrons. We don't include the transition metals. They can have different charges depending what they bond to. This is a general way we can look at how atoms, when they form ions, what their charge will be. We can be a little more specific. If we look at this periodic table here, you can see that some of these really we can't look at ionic charges for. But these are the general trends. And if you know these, chemistry gets a lot easier. 
So you might ask, how does an atom become an ion? Well, sodium has one electron in its outer shell. It'll lose that electron when it forms a chemical bond with chlorine. So sodium ends up having a one plus ionic charge. The chlorine, which gained that electron, it now has an extra electron right here. So now it has a negative charge. And you have this plus and minus, these two atoms with opposite charges, they're gonna be attracted and they're gonna form an ionic bond. They're gonna to come together and be attracted to form this NaCl, sodium chloride. So the plus and the minus comes when they form bonds. There is one other way you can do this. If you have just solid sodium or another atom and you hit it with enough energy, you can remove electrons to form ions. This is called ionization. But most of the time in chemistry, we're dealing with chemical bonds. And with ions, they'll form when we have a metal coming together with a nonmetal, forming that ionic bond. So we've talked about positive ions like Na plus or Ca2 plus. These are called cations. And the way you can remember is the T here looks like a plus sign. We also had negative ions. They're called anions like Cl minus or N3 minus. The way I like to remember those is A negative ion. So anions, A negative ion. That'll help you remember that they're negative. The cations, they lost an electron. That made them positive. The anions, they've gained electrons, so they become negative. Neutral elements, like we find on the periodic table, they have the same number of protons and electrons. One last thing. Sometimes you'll see groups of atoms together with a charge, a negative or a positive charge after them. These are considered polyatomic ions. They're made up of groups of atoms together, and they have an overall charge. We see these quite often in chemistry bonded to other elements. In fact, they get their charge because they're bonded to an element that loses electrons. They gain them, they have the negative charge. This is Dr. B with the difference between atoms and ions. Thanks for watching.